I think it would be cool to learn of where Emery's whereabouts are. Oh. Lethal Company. Someone forgot to tell the intern about the slime again, and now is being fucking digested. God fucking damn. You've all probably seen at least one or two of the enemies in Lethal Company at this point. I think now that the game has been out for a month, I'm a little late covering what is arguably the main focus of the game, the enemies. However, I do think it could still be useful to give an in-depth guide for all of you hardworking Amazon employees out there. I'll be going into detail about the spawning system of Lethal Company first, talk about every enemy's basics, and rate them based on how difficult I think they are to deal with. Stick around if this interests you, or if you just like my voice or something. I've gotten a better understanding of how every enemy spawns in Lethal Company after a good month of playing, and I'll go ahead and go over how every enemy spawns in the game first. Every enemy has a spawn chance, power level, and maximum spawn amount. I'll only be covering the power level and the maximum spawn amount in this video, and if you want to see their chances to spawn on any given moon, I'd recommend checking out my Moon's Guide video. To touch on max power levels first, every moon has a max power level that determines how many enemies can spawn on a given day. If for example, if a moon has a power level of 12 and an enemy takes up a total power amount of 4, then only 3 of those enemies can spawn on a moon with no other enemies present. These max power amounts are separated from the inside and the outside of the bunker. The max amount on the other hand is pretty self-explanatory. It just tells you how many of every given enemy can spawn, period. Sometimes this can be in the double digits. There are five total outdoor enemies, and they will kill you. I am not including the birds or locusts because they're peaceful little fuzzballs. I put uwu in the script here. I'm not gonna fucking say it. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I did that. We're gonna start off this list with the circuit bees, as they're the only enemy that can be classified as a daytime enemy. This means they spawn outside during the day. Going forward, I'll keep the max power levels of each moon on screen, so you can do the math yourself for each creature I list going forward and how many of them can spawn on each moon. Starting off, the bees have a power level of 1 and a maximum amount of 6. The circuit bees are electric widow guys that attack you if you get too close to their hive. They spawn on every moon that isn't a real frozen hellscape as well, meaning the 5 lower tier moons. If you do successfully steal their hive, they will roam around the map searching for it or for any unfortunate bystanders carrying a jar of pickles. I rank them at a D tier in terms of difficulty due to the fact that a lot of them can spawn at once and they can block your entry into a bunker if you're unlucky but they're relatively tame and avoidable otherwise. One last thing I'll do is list the HP of every enemy at the end as well, and bees are invulnerable. Eyeless dogs are the first enemy you will likely run into at night, and they come in at a power level of 2. They have a maximum spawn count of 8, which is kind of a lot. It's like a goddamn animal shelter up on these moons, man. These are one of two outside enemies that could spawn on every map. The dogs are called eyeless dogs for a reason, as their entire mechanic is based around being able to hear sound. They operate off of the game's noise loudness mechanic, which I won't get into in too much detail here, but it essentially gives every sound in the game a sound level. If all of these sounds add up to a certain level, the dog will enter a suspicion mode, and if you're spotted, the dog will enter an enraged mode. I feel like both of these are pretty self-explanatory. Some cool things to note about this noise system are that noise levels are halved when line of sight is broken, which can be super useful on maps like Titan, Vow, and March because there's trees and staircases and other things that block line of sight. And with this in mind, the best counters to the eyeless dogs are the ship horn, which leads them to the front of the ship, the radar booster because you can ping a sound to it, and walkie talkies. Basically anything that drives out sound. If you order something in a shipment as well, they will also be attracted to the song that plays. Eyeless dogs are going in A tier for how difficult I think they are, as they have a lot of counters but can sometimes spawn in packs of 3 to 8 which is incredibly rough. They also take 12 shovel hits to kill which is more than anything in the game. Earth Leviathans are the other type of outside enemy that has a chance to spawn on every map in the game. These massive worms come in at a power level of 2 and have a max spawn count of 3. They take up the largest amount of space on the minimap, and this is because they are by far the largest enemy in the game. In this clip, for instance, you can see one literally eat a forest giant, which we'll get to in a second. Size aside, the Leviathans have an interesting mechanic where they will roam underground, searching for vibrations, aka your movements, before burrowing out of the ground to strike their prey. There will also be about a 1 second warning when the ground will start emitting soil and debris, alerting you of the worm's presence and the worm's attack. I find them pretty easy to deal with. They have a pretty distinct grumbling sound cue and the visual cue that I mentioned earlier, so I'd honestly rank them at a C tier. Leviathans are invincible as well due to their size. Forest Giants are the second largest outside enemy and have a power level of 3. They have a max spawn count of 3 as well. The way that Forest Giants work is essentially a line of sight version of the Eyeless Dogs. There's a stealth meter mechanic in place for every player, where if you're moving and not crouched, your stealth goes down and you are more visible to the giant. It also is very dependent on the distance you are from the giant, and if line of sight is broken. The forest giant has a similar three-stage pattern of aggression, where if it becomes suspicious enough, it will stare in your direction for three seconds before beginning to survey your area. 
If it begins chasing you, good luck. I'd rate Forest Giants at an S tier. Even if their speed was nerfed recently and you have to panic effect when they spot you, they are still incredibly hard to deal with. Each of these previous three outside enemies are insta-kills, by the way, and the Giants are invincible, except for Worms, apparently. The final outside exclusive enemy I'll be covering, which is the most recent one, are the Baboon Hawks. They're cute. I love their little scrunkly noises. That aside, they have a power level of 1 and a maximum spawn count of 15, which is ridiculous and often leads to a ridiculous amount of them at once. This is really bad when you start to look at their entire mechanic of aggression. Baboonhawks won't attack a group of players that they are outnumbered by, but they will attack when the opposite is true. This means that if you have a tight knit group of 3 people roaming around, it would take a herd or flock of 4 Baboonhawks to begin attacking your group. You're safer when you travel in tight groups with these guys. They also have an interesting spawn mechanic where the chance of more hawks spawning fluctuates depending on how many are on the map currently. I'll leave the graph up here in case you're curious. I'd rank Baboon Hawks at a C tier as they're honestly pretty avoidable unless your teammates are already dead to something, which happens a lot. They take 6 subtle hits to kill as well if you want to go that route. I'll split the indoor enemies list in half, with one list containing easy to deal with enemies and the other including the batshit insane difficult enemies. You'll notice the tier list reflects that as well as we continue. To kick off the indoor enemies, we have the hoarding bugs. These cuddly greedy little fucks come in at a power level of 1 and a spawn count of 8, holy shit. I've never personally seen more than 4 in one map, but I have seen clips of 6 or 7. The Hoarding Bugs are likely one of the very first enemies you'll see and live to tell the tale in this game, as their mechanic is based on you leaving them alone. They live up to their name and like to pick up spot within the bunker as a nest, before grabbing every goddamn air horn and key imaginable before stuffing it in their pockets and bringing it home to their nest to protect. If you stumble across one and don't want to get whacked by its sharp legs, there's two things I recommend avoiding. A. Don't stay inside its hitbox for too long, as it's not actually cuddly for anyone that isn't a rep or ducky. And B. Do not enter its nest. I'd put hoarding bugs at a low C tier only because they're pretty avoidable, but sometimes when they pick an annoying place for their nest, or just push themselves against you in the most affectionate way sometimes, their aggro can be annoyingly easy to set off. They also take 2 to 3 shovel hits to kill, which is pretty weak. Snare fleas are like the hoarding bugs, except they don't care about loot and do care about you. Aww. They come in at a power level of 1 as well and have a maximum spawn count of 4. They like to set up ambushes on the ceiling, similar to barnacles from Half-Life. If you step under one, they will screech and enter their attack mode, attempting to lunge on your face and suffocate you. If you want to avoid them, all you have to do is keep an eye out on the ceilings and scan around you everywhere. They can be surprisingly sneaky, and for that reason I'll put snare fleas at a B tier. Similarly to the hoarding bug, they take 2-3 shovel hits to take down. Spore lizards are one of the first and only indoor enemies that are essentially harmless so long as you keep taps on them. They have a power level of 1, and only 2 of them can spawn in any given bunker. When the spore lizard spots a player, it will hiss, attempting to break line of sight. Once it does, it will enter into its normal, roaming passive state again. If you get as close to it as you would a hoarding bug you find too cute to pass up, the spore lizard will bite you for essentially no damage, and spray out toxic pink spores in the shape of a gas cloud, making that area very hard to see in. Aside from the singular way the enemy can harm you, spore lizards are essentially harmless. I'd argue the most harmless in the game in terms of indoor enemies. They're an easy D tier, and I will continue attempting to hug them in the future. They're also invincible, except to me as I will continue attempting to hug them in the future. Did I mention that I will continue yeah. Hygro di Hygro Hygro Dare? Nyagro Deer. Hygro Deers, aka Slimes, are the last of objectively easy indoor enemies in the game. They have a power level of 1 and a maximum spawn count of 2. I actually find myself finding two of these more often than just one. Let me know in the comments if I'm alone in that. Slimes have one of the most straightforward mechanics in the game. If you touch it, you get injured until you die. It will roam around and always seek the nearest player. It's also attracted to sounds like the boombox and air horn, which is super cute. These guys are probably the cutest in the game except for the spore lizards. Easy D tier in terms of difficulty though, as long as you don't get cornered you're fine, and even if you touch them for a little bit, such as not jumping over them all the way, they won't kill you immediately. These cute little guys are also invincible, because why would you kill them anyways? Next I'll cover up the harder indoor enemies of Lethal Company. These ones for the most part are the enemies you'll actually have to watch out for and worry about when scouting for loot within the confines of the bunker. To kick off the hard enemies of Lethal Company, I may as well cover the Bunker Spider as I wasn't sure which category to put them in personally. They come in at a power level of 3 and a spawn count of 1. They operate as a normal spider would with 
oh, I don't know, like 100,000 times the size of one, give or take a couple thousand. I digress though, the spider, similarly to the hoarding bug, actually picks a nest somewhere in the bunker, before placing webs all around that nest in unsuspecting areas. The spider's AI will attack any player that it sees after setting up said webs, or any player that happens to get caught in one. The spider has essentially two weaknesses though, which are the fact that it is the third slowest enemy inside the bunker, and that it can be frozen in place if you catch it early enough, essentially rendering it harmless temporarily. I'd rank the spider at a C tier. It is really only a threat in unfortunate situations such as being cornered or not being able to jump over it due to stamina. They also take 4-6 to six shovel hits to kill from what I find. Good luck with that, they kill you in 2 bites. Next I'll go ahead and cover everyone's favorite, the Bracken. Flower men, aka Brackens, come in at a power level of 3 with a maximum spawn count of 1, which is similar to the spider. The Bracken are the very first enemy in this indoor list that can instantly kill you, so keep that in mind as well. How this glowy eyed fuck works is that he will stalk and hunt the nearest player, similar to the slime, before snapping that player's neck if he's able to get close enough from behind. He's essentially a silent stalker, so always keep an eye over your shoulder. There's another way for him to attack other than the passive hunting mode, which is when he becomes enraged. There are three ways to enrage a Bracken, stunning him with a stun grenade, staring at him for too long, or getting close enough to feel his long finger slide along your supple employee body. Why did I fucking run? If you glance at him without staring at him though, you should be fine. I'd put Bracken at a B tier for difficulty, but again, good luck with getting the 4-6 to six shovel hits needing to take him down. The next enemy I'll cover is the Thumper. Also called halves, the Thumpers come in at a power level of 3 and a maximum spawn count of 4, which is 4 too many if you ask me. The Thumper is a creature that crawls around with its bulky arms, and when aggressive or hunting, can reach speeds of 130 miles per hour. Don't Google it. Just trust me here, okay? Just, just trust me. They are the most dangerous when you are spotted down long corridors for this reason, as they gain speed the longer they are moving in one direction. Their aggro is completely dependent on vision, as they are deaf, as well. They can kill you in three bites, and I'd put Thumpers at a B tier, as their speed can be a bit tough to deal with, even if breaking line of sight can be incredibly easy sometimes. They also take three to four shovel hits to kill. Coilheads are the first enemy that is aggressive and invincible inside the bunker, immediately shooting them up to be one of the toughest in the game. They also have a power level of 1 and a maximum spawn count of 5, meaning you will commonly see more than one of them on any given map. They function in a way similar to that of the Weeping Angels from the Doctor Who series, which a lot of people have already pointed out. When looking at a coilhead, they can't move, but as soon as you turn your head the other way, they move faster than any other enemy in the game aside from the Jester and the Thumper, hunting you down and attempting to replace your head with a spring. The best ways to avoid coil heads are by utilizing doors and secure doors, as well as bringing in as many teammates to stare at it as you can. I'd rank coil heads at an A tier, as they can't be killed. Also, even though they don't technically instantly kill you if you're lucky, they are essentially just a faster bracken with a more chaotic energy. Speaking of speed and chaos, here comes the fucking scum of the earth, the Jesters. The Jesters are little jack-in-the-box creatures that come in at a power level of 3 and a maximum spawn count of 1. They have one of the most interesting mechanics in the game, where they essentially can't hurt you until their timer starts winding. The Jester has three states, the passive, following you state, the winding state, and the chase state. After following a player for enough time, this psychotic little shit starts getting bored and turns his lever to play some music. As the music gets more and more chaotic and faster, you know the weasel is coming, and when it pops, oh boy you're gonna want to get out of there. When the jester is in chase mode, it will stomp after any player, gradually picking up speed in a similar fashion to the thumper. However, it is no thumper. It will continue the speed no matter where it is in the bunker and no matter what direction, making its way to the nearest breathing player in an attempt to, well, make them stop breathing. The only way to reset this timer and to make the jester passive again is to have every player leave the bunker for 5 seconds. I personally like to wait 10 though. If this doesn't happen, the timer will continue, and if the Jester is already aggressive, it will continue to be that way. I'll rank Jester as an A tier for its difficulty only because it has a counter that is pretty straightforward. Just leave the bunker. It's also invincible, because of course, why wouldn't it be? Insaneous Thingus. The last of the indoor exclusive enemies is the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is one of the two most recent enemies added to Lethal Company and completely changed the game. In a moment, I'll discuss it more, but first I want to go ahead and add a quick note. I really appreciate the fact that we increased the numbers of views from subscribers, but it only went from 0.8 to 1.2, which still means that only 12 out of 1,000 of you people who watch my content hit that magic button. If you do, it'll make you a chad, all I'm saying. Anyways, the Nutcracker has a power level of 1, which is concerning considering it has a maximum spawn count of 10. The Nutcracker is the first enemy, if you don't count the turret, that has a ranged attack. This is in the form of a fucking shotgun, because of course. It has a unique mechanic in the fact that it roams around in a defensive mode, searching for any movement from a player that might be lurking around its domain. If it catches you even as much as moving your mouse, it will blast you with a shotgun. It will enter a hunting state where it will attempt to find and shoot you if it catches you moving. So I'd recommend staying still and letting it walk past if it is in the same room or cornering you, and running away if not. 
They take an incredible five shovel hits to kill, and this is probably because of the fact that they drop a shotgun when they die, as well as a random amount of ammo, making them incredibly useful for gaining weapons in the game. They're also the only enemy in the game to drop an item as of version 45. I'd rate Nutcrackers in the A tier for the difficulty, as their shotgun does an insane amount of damage. So long as you're far away enough though, you should be okay. There are two enemies inside Lethal Company that can spawn inside the bunker and follow a group of employees outside as well. These get their own ratings as a result of this interesting characteristic, as you have to worry about them outside as well as inside. The first of these enemies is the Ghost Girl. The Ghost Girl is one of the more iconic enemies in Lethal Company, coming in at a power level of 2 and a spawn count of 1. She roams around the map toying with employees as if they were prey before entering a hunting mode after a few minutes of stalking. She instantly kills the player that she deems a favorite after successfully reaching them when she is hunting. You can tell when she is in hunting mood when she is skipping with her arms out. This will be moments before your death, likely. The Ghost Girl is the main enemy in the game that has aggression entirely based on your insanity level, which you'll notice increase with a blurry blue effect every time something terrifying happens or when a teammate dies in front of you. The Ghost Girl also keeps track of the highest turnabout when picking her new victim, so keep note of that if you're watching your back for Bracken constantly. The Ghost Girl's chase mechanic can be triggered by one of three events with varying chances. The first event is when you approach the Ghost Girl, there is a 65% chance you will enter her hunting phase. If you only look at her slightly, this drops down to a 35% chance. And if you have the gall to stare at her, she will likely enter her hunting phase with an 85% chance. The only way to survive her hunting phase is to essentially avoid her touching you for 20 seconds, which is borderline impossible. When this is successfully done though, she will teleport away and re-enter stalking mode. I'd rank Ghost Girls at an S tier. They're easily the hardest enemy to deal with in the game in my opinion. The only real way to do this is by simply not looking at her or approaching her, which is easier said than done. The final enemy I'll be talking about today are the Masked. The Masked are the newest enemy added to Lethal Company. They have a power level of 1 and a maximum spawn count of 10. Holy shit, you'll see why this is bad in a second. The masked enemy can spawn in one of two ways, as a normal enemy in the bunker or when an employee stares at a masked loot item for too long, getting possessed by one and dying as a result. This is the first enemy in the game that visually mimics that of an employee. They also move like employees, sprint like employees, and can climb up and down ladders like one. Arguably the worst part of the masked enemy is that you can't tell from the ship if a player is possessed or not, as they show up the same on cameras. Yes, this also means you can teleport a masked enemy right into the ship. There's one last mechanic I'll touch on that I seldom see people talking about, and that's the ambush mechanic. When a masked enemy is bored enough in the bunker, and it knows of your existence, it will enter ambush mode, where it will slowly start to infiltrate the interior of the ship and hide, waiting for its next victim. This is the only enemy in the game to have a mechanic like this, and it's absolutely terrifying if it's around for long enough. I'll rate the masked enemy at an S tier as well, because even though you can pretty easily kill one in 4 shovel hits, differentiating between a masked and a teammate can be hard sometimes, and it instantly kills you if he grabs you and starts puking blood on your face, unless you have a teammate there to save you. I hope this guide was comprehensive and informative for all of the enemies in this game, and if you stuck around this long, I'm glad you enjoyed the content as much as you did. It means a lot, genuinely. I have a new Discord server and Patreon down below if you want to get in touch with the community and support me, but other than that, that's pretty much it. That's the end.